Hello, everybody, and welcome to the North American Star League season number two. This is week number five, division five, and boy, do we have a great day for you. But first, introductions. I am Andre Great Torpecho. Alongside me is my good old friend, Jake Orbs Clarou. Jake, how you doing, man? I'm doing excellent, man. Dude, we have such great matches today. I can't wait to tell you them, so let's go ahead and get into them right away. We have... As our match number one, QXE versus Tyler. Then we're going to go into Puma versus Hasselobs. Last but not least, we have Damaga versus Mo Man. This is going to be a sick day. Short oh day, man. but a sick day. This is going to be absolutely insane. Hasuobs versus Puma. Definitely the match I'm looking forward to the most. Oh my gosh. Those guys are such, such high level players, especially in the PVT matchups. So. Oh yeah. Uh, that should just be absolutely insane. Definitely look forward to that. Before we get into the matches too much, I know you're excited. Let's go ahead and look at the map. So Emmett, let me see the maps real quick. There you go. Terminus SE is going to be our first map. They're going to head over to Dual Site, last but not least, and Bell Shear Beach. So let's talk about the maps a little bit. Um, you know, you got this, the first map that is probably the most macro map in the entire map set. Agree, disagree? Oh, no, absolutely. Uh, definitely a very macro-oriented map. Of course, the third even is very accessible. Mm -hmm. uh, most maps that you see nowadays, uh, you'll have the, the main and the natural be right there. That's why it's called the natural expansion. It's naturally what you would take right after you take your main. Uh, but then the third is usually just a little bit farther away, maybe a little bit disjointed, farther away from, uh, from the natural or maybe from your main even. Um, but on Terminus, it's right there, man. So you can take that third yeah. very, very quickly. But... There are destructible rocks leading into it on the SE version, so you got to make sure that you don't take any early aggression. But still, for the most part, it does lead into more of the macro-oriented games. We do see a lot of players taking the fast three base, going up to five gas, and just powering off of that. We'll see what these players do. And then we have dual sight, of course, more of the two, well, the, the two base type of play. It is a two-player map as well. And we normally see just high aggression at that mid-game stage. Sometimes we see it a little bit in the mid-game but that ramp really disallows that. I really feel like we see just two base and powering off that until, you know, 130 supply to 150 supply, then taking the third base. Yeah, uh, dual set is one of those maps where, uh, you know, like I was saying, in Terminus, most maps, you know, the third is a little bit farther away from your natural. Yeah. Or you can go take the third that's, for example, if you're in the 9 o'clock position, the one that's above you, or from the 3 o'clock position, the one that's below you. But it's a little bit hard to defend that at the same time you defend your main and your natural. Um, now, I feel like on a map like dual site, when it's a two-player map that's relatively small, uh, those those Zalaga Towers end up being just oh so important. That map yeah. control ends up being a huge deal. I agree. And then last but not least, we have Belshire Beach, which is a huge open map. A lot of players say Zerk might have a little bit of advantage in this. Of course, in our three matches today, we only have one match that has Z, and it's going to be a ZVZ. Yeah, can't so have imbalance in that, man. It's all it's a wash, man. It's, it's a great. complete wash. I can't wait to get into these uh, games in particular. So let's go ahead and talk about the games. Right now we have, as our last match, Demaga versus Moman. Now, I have to say, Demaga, from Team MTW, this guy has to be the favorite going into this match. Absolutely. Uh, I think that's kind of indisputed right now. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a friend of Moments. I'm a fan of his. Uh, he's mm -hmm. a cool guy. And, uh, you know, he had some skills that he was showcasing back in Brood War. Even in beta, he was doing pretty well on some stuff. But, uh, you know, I think he has been uh, tapering off a little bit lately. And, uh, you know, we haven't seen quite as good results from him. So uh, I think, you know, if he does want to beat Demagi, he's going to have to pull something crazy out. His normal kind of, you know, Zergling heavy style oh, yeah. is probably not going to work against a player of Demagi's caliber. Definitely. And then, you know, a Mo Man's definitely going to have to just change it up a little bit. If he expects to go into a macro game, I think that he will be... Uh, leagues and leagues behind just because Demaga has that just good overall game system on top of that his mechanics are spot on they are scary good so we'll see what Mo Man ha is going to be able to do match number two we do have Puma versus Hasuops this is going to be one of the sickest matches of probably the NASL and it is just to let you guys know it is a Kingston Hyper X match to remember that's in pretty important that means it's going to be one of the, the best matches out of the entire NASL Oh, absolutely. I'm sure it will be a match to remember. Uh, these guys are insanely good. Of course, if you somehow don't know Puma, uh, he was the champion from NASL yeah. Season 1. This guy is amazing. Uh, he had to beat, of course, MC in the final. So his TVP is top-notch. Hasuops, though, uh, is an amazing, talented Protoss player uh, you know, from Europe. So you'll have to see, you know, we're going to see the European style of Protoss clashing with the Korean style of Terran. Definitely the underdog going into this, and I feel like Hasuops does need to change it up. I don't expect him, you know, a lot of times his TVP is going just into 
into the macro game, trying to get that Colossus, High Templar, that kind of style. Uh, he might have to change it up. He might have to play a little bit more gimmicky because against a player like Puma, you don't want to be playing just standard because that guy can just wreck you so fast. We'll see going into this, but remember, this is the Kingston Hyper X match. So remember, you got to check it out. And last but not least, or the first one up in today's match pool is going to be QXE versus Tyler. Now QXE from Team FXO Imba. Or no, I'm sorry, just, just FXO. FXO right? Just FXO. He is currently um, not training in Korea, unfortunately. He's at school back in California. But uh, you know what? The guy, when he was in Korea, what a freaking amazing player. What a beast, man. Yeah, that all kill in the GSTL. So, yeah. I mean. He's he's really 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 good, uh, and you know even if he's in school, I'm sure uh, he's still going to keep his skill level pretty darn high. Uh, probably doesn't have quite as much time to practice as he would like. Uh, we'll have to see if that affects his gameplay. Yeah, he will be going up against Tyler, who is another person that kind of has trailed off a bit. You know, he used to be one of no, the number one foreigner in the entire scene for StarCraft Bird War. So we know he has a lot of skill. We know he has a lot of good theory behind him. You know, it's just weird to see him just kind of taper off. I don't know if it's just lack of motivation or a little bit of just um, uh, maybe bad luck, whatever it might be. But Tyler has not been producing the results that I know he is capable of. The guy is such a talent. And, uh, you know, we'll see if he's going to be able to uh, really give it his all against his opponent, QXC. Only time will tell, but... Uh, you know, we're going to have to check from there. That being said, that's going to be our matches for today. Really quickly, I do want to give a couple of thanks first to our sponsors, Azo Monitors and iBuyPower Computers. They are our monitor and computer sponsor, respectively. Um, they have been just so, so great in supporting eSports and supporting this industry. Please go show them your love. Additionally, thanks to Kingston HyperX, of course, we have a Kingston HyperX match to remember, so go check that out today. It's going to be absolutely awesome. And go check out all the other ones that have happened in the past. You can do that by going to www.nasl.tv and purchasing an HD pass. It allows you to the VOD access along with the 1080p quality and the commercial free experience. Last but not least, I want to give a huge thanks to Orb over here, who has graciously come in and started casting with us. And for those of you that don't know, Orb has been such a contributor to the scene. He's one of the guys that has, well, actually the only guy, I believe, well, one of the main guys, the main guy that has been casting the Korean weeklies. And uh, why don't you tell there. people a little bit about that? Oh, sure. You know, it's this tournament that I've been casting. Uh, it's a really cool tournament, actually. Uh, you know, I, I love casting it because what we actually get to see is a lot of the really top-level Koreans, especially some of the no-name ones, you know, Puma, who we're going to get to see today, and who was the champion NSL1. Uh, you know, I don't think anybody, there was, there was just almost nobody that seemed to know who he was when he showed up in NASL 1 and just exploded into the scene. But you know what? Actually, we'd already seen him playing in the Korean Weekly for a couple weeks before that dominating. So, uh, you know what? If you want to get that, that first look at some of those no-name players starting to try to make them a name for themselves in the scene, definitely check it out. Normally, we broadcast on Mondays and Tuesdays, 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, it's on ESV TV, uh, Esports Vision. Used to be IC Cup. Just check that out on ESV TV. It's an awesome tournament, and uh, I think you'll really enjoy it. Yeah, and we appreciate everything that you do, Orb. Uh, again, awesome stuff. Go check him out and all the things that he has been casting. That being said, let's go ahead and get into our first match of the day. It's going to be QXE versus Tyler. Welcome to the North American Sonic. Ladies and gentlemen. I never knew that when StarCraft 2 would come out that we would have anywhere near this big of a scene internationally. $50,000 will be awarded to someone that is such a staggering number. This is not just a game. It's an all-out award. 40 of the world's top players all competing for the 